Mikey and Dave are two tabletop gamers who love their hobby. At 2015 PAX convention, Mike Selenka, a favourite game designer of theirs, released his list of 100 games you absolutely, positively must know how to play. The 100th game was a challenge. The 100th game was one that you designed yourself. Knowing nothing about game design, Ricky and Dave have set out to play through as many games from Mike's list as possible, hoping to learn enough to design their game. Join them now as they look for the core mechanic. Hi, this is Ricky. This is Dave. And this is the core mechanic. And today we're introducing a little bit of a new sort of uh, segment. It's a much shorter segment uh, called Tech Talk. Yep. And uh, basically, Tech Talk is where we're going to be sort of defining some of the more complex uh, terms and definitions you might hear in gaming. Anything to do with game design. Um, and of course, being amateurs, we're probably learning this as we go as well. Yes. So, uh, so of course we invite any comments at the bottom of the of uh, in the comments section uh, to get involved in these discussions because uh, we're to learning games. just just as much as yeah, anyone else out there. We're we're trying to see well, what makes a good game good game. That's and, right. Uh, and today we want to start with uh, I suppose a word which is not normally a part of the general discussion of. No, I only heard it. Art just before we started this, and the word is heuristics. That's right. I know in teaching, yeah. heuristics is becoming a much bigger deal, mm. but as is one of the many things I'm finding, the stuff that is we're starting to discover in education yeah. is stuff that game design's been doing for quite some yeah. time and, and rather well. Yeah, the only time I've ever heard the word heuristics was sort of rules of thumb or uh, when evaluating strategies, marketing strategies, that yeah. sort of stuff. So what we mean by it is, is exactly that. It's Heuristics is not learning the rules. It's knowing how to play the game. Yeah. So you, you have the rules uh, which teach you what to do, but heuristics is what happens within the game play, the state of play. Yeah. And I think as a player subconsciously you've already used heuristics oh absolutely yeah absolutely it doesn't matter what you're playing really yeah uh you know i mean i can talk about it in terms of sport uh, i can talk about it in terms of learning and education uh and i can talk about it in terms of board games yeah. so what are heuristics so essentially heuristics one of the ways that uh, Richard Garfield talks about them is that they're the discussion that happens after a game that's right so when we sit down one of the, the examples I would use is we were talking about Pathfinder, mm. the adventure card yeah. game. I said the rules were really easy to pick up and get into, yeah. but from there I was able to start picking up on, well, strategy, what can I do? Mm. There was one point in the game we got to, and we had the the Blessings deck, which, yeah. which was slowly diminishing. That's right. Well, we, we had, were down to how many, would you say? Oh, uh, it was getting pretty low. Like, we late. spent a long... It was mid-game, definitely mid-game to late mid-game. Yeah. Uh, we had still every location there. Still to go, yeah. All open. Yeah. Uh, and I was at my location, which I had chosen on the basis that, as a, as a spellcaster, it had more spells there. So, it benefited him. It benefited my character. And the decision for me when it got to my turn was, well... I got the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the bad guy for that location. Yes. So I could, have, I, could I could, lo I could close the location essentially. But so far, I hadn't gotten any of those spells that were still in there. Mm -hmm. So I'd gotten through half the location, missed out on all the spells that were there to use. So they were still there, and I had the opportunity to lock the location mm -hmm. and move on, or to keep the location open and search through for those spells. Yeah. So I had to make some decisions. That's right. So for me, the decision was, well, if I if I lock it, we're one step closer to the end game. Yeah. But if I leave it open, then I'm, my character can can get some better, you know, yeah. tools, equipment, possible spells. So basically, a small balancing act happened over here. Well, that's right. So for me, the decision was quite simple because mm -hmm. I looked at the blessing stack and I knew that there was, you know, not a lot of time left in the yeah. game. So that would be called. A positional heuristic. Yeah, so I'm using my position. Positional heuristics essentially give information back to me as the player mm -hmm. about where I am in the state of play. Right. Uh, and then I had to make a decision. Well, okay, positionally we're running out of time. Yeah. This is getting the pressures on. If we don't start closing locations, then we we run the risk of actually losing the, the campaign. Yeah. 
Uh, and so what I needed to use was the directional the heuristics. heuristics. Those directional heuristics helped me understand what steps we needed to take as a team to accomplish the mission. Yep. So the decision was easy. I knew that despite the fact that on a personal basis I was losing the access to those spells, mm -hmm. I needed to lock that location. That's right. So he looked at his position, he realized not exactly the greatest position to be in. The directional heuristic he chose was to maximize the value of his play. Absolutely. But we see this in lots of other games. Absolutely. You see it an awful lot in video games. Anyone that's played an MMO, you understand the quick You'll find it all the time in communities. People are finding the fastest way to level up. That's right. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is heuristics in a rarely good game will grow with you. Heuristics should be easy to pick up from a beginner level, but as you start to master the game, you should be able to determine more and more things that you can do to maximise the value of your place. Absolutely. So really, in terms of game design, uh, if I was a game designer, I'm thinking about what information am I feeding my players uh, for them to get enough information to feel partly like they're in control of the game, uh, but also how they can manage their, work, their character through it. And I think a good game provides the relevant information to a player so that they have the ability to grow and progress. That's right. Ideally, you would think that these heuristics would be very clear. Yeah, right. From but the beginning. I think it's different for each game. Oh, so I think I think with, with with some games you want to you want to hold back certain information because you want you want your players like if you're doing a deduction game. Ah, yes. You don't want to be giving away large amounts of positional sure. information right at the beginning. And you don't want and if you're doing a deductive game, you don't necessarily want to make it really clear. So. To some extent, you're balancing these things. The information you're giving your character, your players is balancing what state of play do you want to create. Right, yeah. Whereas uh, some games, you want you want position to be really clear. Well, certain board games like chess, you know all the information at any given time. The only thing you don't really know is what your opponent's going to do. Right, so the hidden information, like the, the state of play will change based on the decision that the opponent will make. Yeah. But each time you're calculating where you are positionally and then with each play you then make a directional decision how to better that better position. That. Look at look at just recently we were playing uh, Small, Small World. World. Played Small World and I we had uh, we were introducing uh, our friend Lee to it and uh, and Lee's a bit of a pain in the bum because uh, <laughs> he has a tendency to think rather well strategically and tactically. Um, and he's got a mean streak of all wise. <laughs> That's right. He's never too pleasant about it. <laughs> but uh, but at the same time, like he's really good at the, picking up those yep. elements of those games and making decisions. Um, and I know that the only reason I, like at the end of the game, I sat there and I thought back and I went, well, why did I lose? Mm. I could see that I, I went, oh, well, actually it was way back in round three after a 10 round game that in round three, I had the choice to push my forward. skeletons, skeletons forward yeah. or to go on to decline I chose decline yeah. and realizing now that that wasn't the best tactical or strategic yeah. decision I suppose the question I'd ask now is why did you choose to put them into decline at that stage of the game well there was a couple of things I was thinking about firstly I was thinking about how expanded they were and how thin they were yeah. and part of it was that I forgot that I can I could have sacrificed some of my territory to, temporarily to continue conquering to other people's uh, tribes yep. and I could have still been gaining more and more and keeping other people's play, uh, tribes under control. So if I had pulled back a little bit on my territory and gone and attacked Lee's characters, I would have diminished his forces far more and put him in a much weakened position mm. because after that, once I went to the client, he just went through and stampeded through mm. and then he was able to do his his uh, turtling tactic yeah. with his uh, ghouls, which is a perfectly legitimate strategy for that particular group, mm. and he did it well. And whereas if I had, if I had pulled back on territory and attacked earlier, I would have I would have I would have closed off that avenue for him. Really, yeah. I would have shut that down. So in some senses, it was. I've learned a little bit more about the game now. Yep. I've learned a little bit more about that sometimes in an area control game, 
controlling all the area at once isn't the most isn't the best decision to make. Sometimes I have to sacrifice a bit of that to put a better state of play, in, like to, to get a bit more control over the characters and the boards yeah. and things. So which if you set me up for later. If you went back in time, you'd make a different decision now. Yeah, for sure. I would have but those are heuristics. You start off with your positional heuristics. You determine where you are in the game. Yeah. And then? Absolutely. But then, then you've got to know how to improve your position. No, That's the directional, directional heuristics. Yeah. So I, I suppose for us, we've got to think clearly about what information are we providing. Yeah. And what... Where is it important to give that information? How much information do we give? And I think really it should be, you know, the idea mm -hmm. isn't about helping people to win the game. Yeah. It's about helping them to engage and enjoy the game, the game so that everyone has a good game experience. That's right. If you feel, I think, if you feel that you, you couldn't determine your position or you didn't know how to improve it, yeah. then that just frustrates players. How can you get better if you don't know? Anything? Well, that's right. Yeah. And if you play a game and you know you can't get any better at it, you'll give up. Well, that's right. Why would you play? Exactly. And can you think of a game that has really poor heroes? I, I would. Uh, I would venture to guess that I can, and we'll probably review that game somewhat, uh, somewhat soon because it is on Mike's list, and yeah. I cannot wait to, <laughs> to, uh, to, to vent to have a bit of a chat <laughs> about it. Look yes. forward to it. I'm sure it's going to be entirely ob objective and, and very well thought through. It's not, <laughs> it's not going to be an emotional tirade of me just all. going off my nut. Yeah. But, but we'll get to that. Look, uh, in the short term, as we start to think about our own game design, mm -hmm. we're going to need to be thinking about things like heuristics and the information that we provide our players and what yeah. to do. And we hope that you've got something out of this. Yeah. If you can think of some games with really good heuristics and really bad heuristics, put them in, right in the comments. Uh, if you've got something to add to the discussion, we'd love to hear that too. Until then, uh, he's Ricky. This is Dave. And uh, this is the Core Mechanic doing some tech talk. We'll catch you next time. See you next time.